PlayStation 5 Pro's SoCs reportedly in the works at AMD. Plus, Gaming Insider backs up a huge PlayStation acquisition rumor, and Sony is under investigation by the FTC. All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Salty's PlayStation News Report. Let's get into it. What's up, PlayStation Nation? Welcome to the Saltiest Gaming News Channel, your number one source for PlayStation news and rumors on YouTube. Before we get into today's first story, if you're here for the first time, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. In today's first story, another big name in the gaming industry has chimed in on rumors surrounding which gaming giant PlayStation 5 makers Sony will be acquiring next. In the beginning of this month, Square Enix revealed that it was selling off its West division studios like crystal dynamics edios montreal and the likes including 50 ips to the embracer group what really caught the attention is that it was only worth 300 million dollars that's a bargain considering today's market for huge publishers being sold or just straight developers like sony's acquisition of bungie for 3.6 billion dollars now when you compare this to activision blizzard at 68.7 it's really peanuts it was speculated that the reason why square enix wanted to sell those assets off was was in an effort to make the business more streamlined ahead of an acquisition. Now, I'm not a businessman, but this would make sense from my perspective. If you're trying to sell a car, what do you do? You take it to a car wash, maybe get it detailed, tune it up to make it run better before you sell it. So it's more valuable to whoever is looking at it. Amid these rumors, journalist Jeff Grubb said this in response to acquisition rumors. This does leave Square Enix far more streamlined for potential acquisition. No idea if it happens, but it's more more likely today than yesterday so you got to underline the key idea in that statement no idea if it happens later on in a different tweet grub said okay i've said this a thousand times but there's always someone who is hearing it for the first time we never really hear enough to report on acquisitions with certainty sony acquiring square was the big rumor but i can't confirm that and i continue to not know so at the end of the day jeff grub was pretty much admitting that it is almost impossible to get inside information on huge acquisitions before they happen but he did make it clear that the big acquisition rumor that he was hearing was in fact with Square Enix. To double down on this, another big name in the gaming industry, kind of funny, Greg Miller said that he heard from multiple different sources about Sony acquiring Square Enix. If you guys are familiar, I did a video and we talked about it on a podcast that kind of funny and, and Greg Miller were ones that canceled their podcast for the week because they said something huge was happening and something in fact did not happen. So you got to take this all with a big grain of salt that Square Enix will be the next acquisition for Sony. My personal opinion, I think it could make sense for them considering they streamlined their business, selling off those non-performing and poor performing studios and IPs and making it more enticing for Sony to just come in there and buy it at a reasonable price. They already have a great relationship with timed exclusivity on projects like Forspoken and they had timed exclusive rights for the Final Fantasy VII remake. It could make sense from both sides perspective to make this work. But honestly, I don't know if Sony's going to be going here. I think they might go some other direction, but I want know from you guys do you think square enix will be the next acquisition by sony why or why not and if it's a no for you who will be the next acquisition let's talk about it in other news it looks like the next gen playstation socs are in the works over there at amd it's been revealed that the team behind the socs for the playstation and xbox hardware amd are hiring for a verification engineer for a next generation chip a job posting was listed on linkedin and it had the following the team behind the chip powering Xbox, PlayStation, the latest RDNA family graphics chip is hiring for its Markham location in Canada for the next generation chip development project. We're currently looking for a system on chip verification engineer who will be part of a team working on a next generation of complex SOC design. The successful candidate will play a key role in the SOC verification, performing the following duties for functional power and performance aspects with simulation and hardware emulation environment. Considering the generation didn't start too long ago in 2020, I am very hard pressed to think that this is the next generation of Xbox and PlayStation because how long is this generation truly going to last? I think it's going to be a lot longer than that. 
that. So a betting man would think that these chips are going to be for the mid-gen refreshes for Xbox and PlayStation. Digital Foundry has come out in multiple videos, specifically one on Unreal Engine 5, and spoke on the fact that the CPUs in the PlayStation 5 and Xbox are not up to snuff to run engines like Unreal Engine 5 at 60 to 120 frames per second, and more than likely because of the lack of power, they're going to have to be running these games at 30 frames per second. And it just boggles my mind that in 2022, we're still running games at a horrible 30 frames per second. Once you experience games at that 60 to 120 frames per second level, and then you go back to that peasant level 30 frames per second, it's both jarring and just not pleasing to play. During this generation, I've kind of become a snob when it comes to FPS, because once you play some of these games that you used to play at 30 frames per second, then they get that juicy PlayStation 5 update. Man, it is jarring to go back. Specific example would be God of War. When they gave that 60 frame update, I went and played it, and then I tried to go back. I'm like, nope, nope, I'm, I'm here. I'm at 60 frames per second. So I think that this is specifically for the mid-gen refreshes. We'll probably be getting them, I don't know, two years from now, something like that. And I, I probably think that this generation is going to be extended out based on the lack of chip availability in the beginning years, chip shortages, not being able to get the product out at the pace that PlayStation wants to. PlayStation 4 is still going strong, and that launched in 2013, and we're uh, almost at 10 years for that console. And I could definitely see the PlayStation 5 generation extending into 10 years as well with a mid-gen refresh. But I want to know from you guys, do you think this job listing for a, a next-gen PlayStation and Xbox SOCs is in regards to a mid-gen refresh or the next-gen? Let's talk about it. And the last bit of news, Sony looks like they're under investigation by the FTC. If you guys have been living under a rock, Sony made a huge splash in an acquisition of the great Bungie for a shocking $3.6 billion. Yeah, that's with the B for one studio. When you get into this high level, level of spending for acquisitions. Then the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission gets involved. The FTC has had their microscope out when Microsoft was involved with the huge acquisition of Activision for nearly $70 billion. So when this happened, I just really wasn't expecting something like this. But I think it's not really anything to be worried with because it's just what happens when you have this high level of an acquisition with this much money involved. Now, when it comes to the Microsoft acquisition, a lot more eyes are on it. It's a lot lot more scrupulated, a lot more red tape to pass through, but for both instances, it's unlikely that the acquisitions will be blocked, specifically PlayStation and their acquisition of Bungie. Still, the information reports that the investigation could set the acquisition back about six months, so it's just a matter of when the deal will close for Sony. Bungie and Sony announced that the studio will stay independent, so it doesn't really affect anything, if that makes sense, because it's not like Sony acquired Bungie and they said, hey, you're now exclusive, so Destiny content and all this other stuff will be exclusive PlayStation 5 stuff or something like that. It's going to be the same as it always was. No matter if the deal closes six months from now or a year or two months, business will go on as normal. The FTC only really wanted to know whether or not Bungie was going to keep their games multi-platform and exclusive, and they answered that question. And honestly, with any huge acquisition going forward, I expect the companies to keep these platforms, the bigger acquisitions, multi-platform. We're seeing that with the Activision deal. We're seeing it with Bungie. You saw that with Embracer Group. They're going to keep their stuff multi-platform. So if huge acquisitions happen in the future, I think the big properties will remain multi-plat. But I want to know from you guys, what do you think of the acquisition? First of all, Bungie, do you think Sony overpaid? Do you think that they should have been able to make Destiny and other games exclusive to the PlayStation platform? Or does it make sense to keep it multi-plat? What do you think of this investigation by the FTC? Let's talk about it. But anyway, that's it for today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things playstation and playstation 5 we'll catch you guys on the next one and as always stay salty my friends